good evening everyone yep. and welcome to Angel india light uh, very very happy to be here with uh, lena who is one of my favorite presenters i had the pleasure of uh, attending a talk that she gave last year in agile india 2019 on the expand contract pattern and i am very 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 happy to be here again as she talks about trunk based development and feature toggles and uh, so for those of you who don't know lena lena's uh, the cto of uh, practice now uh, which is the easiest way to monetize your zoom classes uh, she is a an exceptional speaker at multiple conferences a mentor and a generally great person to know uh, so without further ado i'm going to hand the stage over to lena thank you siddharth uh, it's my pleasure to be here at uh, the jail light uh, uh, conference uh, agile in the light conference uh, thank you uh, so thank you to all for attending my session um this is a different way of presentation uh, but this year is different so hope it has to be different hope that we come out of this uh, tough situation so uh anyway without much uh, uh, delay we can get started with uh, my talk so a few years back i was at a conference um, where the speaker was talking about the advantages that they got by moving to x framework in javascript and um uh, the talk was about uh, how they moved their current code base to that framework but one of the thing that caught my attention was his thought that we wrote 100k lines of code in 6 months and uh, now the code is very really modernized we can add more features now and we are happy with the current code base and one of the members from the audience asked a question okay it's good that we you wrote 100k lines of code in 6 months uh is it released uh, released to the uh, users what the value they got what the value business got from Uh, this shift from one framework to another, and the answer was surprising. At least, at least not not in a pleasant way, but but it was slightly sad for me when he heard the response. He said, "No, we have not released it yet. Uh, we'll be doing that in the next uh, few weeks. Um, we ha- we have we've been doing this in a branch. We had another branch to uh, keep on doing bug fixes and other feature development." now we need to add those back to this and in the next few weeks we will be releasing it this is not a made up story this actually happened and the speaker is from a well known well funded indian startup and they have all the money in their, at their hand they have a big team maybe even a devops team if you call that way and but the sad part is that for 6 months they been writing code not releasing and that's really really sad uh, and this is what uh, maybe on top of it mentioned in their book in the early 90s in the soft lean software development book like how much time do you take it takes for you for the for you or your team to push one line of code to, to, to production and when uh, when we ask this you know that you can see a, a, a range of a uh, range of uh, the uh, responses to this say from hours or minute to say not months or say even years this again i'm not exaggerating i have seen teams which take months to push maybe not one line of code but even a small change to production because of various reasons so coming back to and this is a uh, typical last mile problem it gets built but nothing gets out, out uh, nothing goes out or nothing becomes useful to the end users and how do you do that for architecture uh, so one of the going back to the problem that the uh, speaker let let him call call, call as baby baby steam fish one of the techniques they could have used is this uh, is this uh, wonderful technique called branch by abstraction so instead of creating branches for your code you create abstraction layers in your code so that it can continue to deliver okay and um, uh, abstraction is part of any any uh, uh, say, uh any language that you take and it's it's very really natural to it and instead of creating branches as as part of your repository you create 
abstractions in your in your code so that you can continue to uh, maintain both old versions and new versions of code. So what happens is you write abstraction for the new uh, uh, new uh, abstraction for the existing one. Route all your old code with that. When you write start writing the new one, write another abstraction for the new one, and then uh, start keep on adding. New, uh, uh, code to the new one and then route it to the new one and once you are done move the entire uh, uh, code base to the new implementation kill off the old one and that is the uh, technique with branch by abstraction and the similar technique you can use for a database uh, this is called uh, uh, expand contract pattern that Siddharth has mentioned I've spoken at Agile India uh, last year about this where you uh, keep both old schema and new schema and then um, uh, expand it for both, and then once you are done with uh, with uh, the migration, you collapse to the uh, new implementation. And that's a very good technique, uh, and it's a it's a low risk approach for making database changes. So the basics for all this is uh, that's fine. That is what makes makes uh, your code traversing from the developer machine to the uh, servers in a, in, a, in, a, in a reliable and sustainable and predictable manner. And for you to have uh, a deployment pipeline, the, what you need is is uh, what we call as trunk based development or uh, development and continuous integration. So continuous integration without trunk based development doesn't make much sense because the idea of continuous integration is continuously integrate that all that all the developers all the uh, uh, they, they push to a single branch and at least once in a day everyone integrates that code and that is the meaning of continuous integration not the kind of things that we saw with every stream uh, they were continuously isolating not continuously integrating and so when you have continuous integration uh, uh, and when you have trunk based development um, what about you, if you want to, uh, uh, if there are features that you don't want to open it, open up uh, for uh, every user, or you want to go to say user acceptance tests, or say you want to get confirmation from stakeholders before opening up to the end user base, user base, and that is where feature toggles uh, comes into picture. So again, continuous delivery is about continuously deploying. Deploying. It doesn't mean that you have to continuously release. Release is up to the business when they want to. Uh, it, 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 they should have the power to decide when to release. Should it release to the entire user base? Should it be released to a few users? Those kind of things has to be within the business, and uh, and uh, and that is what continuous delivery enables. But you cannot do that if you are not continuously deployed. So um, feature toggles are are uh, are like toggles or switches where you um, uh, where you depending upon a condition you decide whether to uh, whether to enable that feature on a certain environment or a, or on a, uh, for a certain user. Okay, so it's like uh, toggles, and then this is a sample Ruby code. Um, uh, and you can control it with, uh, say, either as configuration files or as, or as environment variables, or even in database. You can keep those, and depending upon those conditions, what what the value of the flag it decides what to do. Okay, and uh, more, there are different kinds of feature toggles, uh, and I'll explain um, in detail in the, in the coming slides. So, you, so usually feature toggles are short lived. You use it for a certain purpose. And then you remove that uh, toggle. Um, that is a usual case. There are unusual cases where you can use it for uh, as a as a long running uh, toggle. But if there are too many, then the code becomes very uh, very complicated because feature toggles adds effects to the code. Okay, so the release toggle is one to type of uh, feature toggle. Um, uh, this is a most common one or most uh, uh, popular one where you can avoid. You don't have to uh, where you can control what is when is when it can be released, 
uh, and you can continue to uh, deploy. So, for example, we, you are in, we are implementing a new feature, and then that that we need to open it up only in staging environment, not in other environments, because we want to take a, test it uh, with uh, uh, with stakeholders or sh show a demo to the stakeholders, or we want to test it with with the uh, uh, with the test in detail in the staging environment. You can keep it keep it as a uh, uh, release toggle, and then once you're comfortable, remove that toggle and push it to production. Okay, and uh, you can keep that toggle for some time until you get comfortable that okay, this is indeed working as expected. Usually, these toggles are in the front end, you, your database or your um, uh, or, or any backend changes uh, are are that you don't you don't toggle it with that. What what you usually what is usually seen with the release toggles is that that the certain functionality is hidden from the UI uh, on either on certain environments or on or to certain users. Okay. Next is experimental toggles. This is usually for A/B testing when you want to test different kinds of different versions of the app or you want to release this feature to say one percent of the users or say twenty percent of the users first. And they increase that. That is what is called a scanner releasing. Can be releasing, and uh, this is useful. Uh, you can use toggles for doing that. And this is not just configuration. Um, it is the, the the toggles are enabled or dis disabled depending upon certain condition of the user. Say maybe it can be the region, uh, or it can be the type of user, like how long the user has been in the system, okay, so and so forth. And uh, this is also usually it is short lived because uh, you once you get a hang of okay what version works better, then you implement that and release to all users. And the last one is off struggles. Uh, this is uh, um, this is this is where it can be where toggles can be long living. Uh, this is this is for designing for failure. Uh, a good example of uh, this is uh, say. Uh, you have, uh, let's take the example of Netflix. Um, we are browsing uh, and then we, we are looking at one um, uh, one movie and then usually it gives you recommended uh, uh, recommendations for the for the one you are, you are currently viewing. And if, if, if uh, that that is, uh, that takes, that may take a lot of, uh, if, if that has a, a Imagine it is using a lot of algorithm to identify that, and then that service is actually uh, responding slower. Or you have an external integration where you get a lot of data, and then you are showing it, and then that external uh, external service is uh, is down. So either you can turn off that completely, or you can um, or you can use a show a cache version of that uh, of that in, uh, whatever you got earlier. So. Um, if you want to turn it off completely, that has to be on uh, dynamically done rather than deploying it. And that is where you can use obstacle. So depending upon certain condition, if so certain services is is not responding within the within this time, then turn turn off that or show something else instead of that. Okay, so uh, this this may you may have to keep for longer, with, uh, uh, and uh, as that's why obstacles are kept for longer uh, and. This is usually for making sure. Usually for making sure that okay, you have, your system doesn't fail because of a uh, external dependency or a, or a, or a problem that you have with, with some other integration. And um, every every approach, like uh, anything that you do, has pros and cons. And this probably is not much different than that. So this is an example. Uh, or uh, from a code base that we wrote a few years ago, we had these many uh, toggles, and you can imagine the kind of complexity that I added into the uh, into the system uh, uh, because of if else and other things. And um, and the, the, how do you fix it? There is what is the uh, what is the easiest way to? Or that, that's a dollar dollar question because uh, there is no an easy. Uh, uh, way to fix it other than saying that okay you keep your toggles to low or to the minimum uh, one technique that worked well uh, when i was working with uh, uh, teams is that okay we keep expired uh, expiry date 
uh, for each dog, like no dog should be living for say more than X weeks or say uh, uh, a few days, uh, depending upon what, as a team what you decide. And then you look out for uh, uh, for the dogs which are uh, living more than that, and then making sure that you're cleaned up on time. Um, I read an interesting um, article about uh, about feature dog in Martifor's wiki, and then that it was mentioned that okay, a team actually wrote a script, uh, automated script to delete uh, toggles uh, 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 to to fail the build if there are toggles which are living more than this uh, expiry date. And I never tried that, but that was an interesting idea that I, I thought okay, it's good to share. So, but expiring, uh, keeping it, it uh, expiring those toggles or deleting that toggles after a certain time is, is indeed required. So, to summarize, uh, optimize for flow. Um, don't write the code in, in a shell. Instead of that, keep releasing it to the users. Um, definitely learn a lot. And uh, so that, so, so you need, when you're saying, when the developer says something is done, it has to be released or it has to be de deployed. Uh, it has, it is merged with the, uh, your trunk and then it is deployed to uh, all the um, environments as soon as possible. And well, that can happen only if you're working in small batches, uh, slice it, use techniques like uh, branch by abstraction and expand contract pattern to slice it and then release it continuously and rather than working on on a branch and then and then merge it back and de deploy and see surprises uh build a lot of safety nets uh, automated test is definitely a safety net uh your monitoring and alerting te production telemetry uh, have a lot of uh, alerting and more monitoring mechanisms to make sure that you know uh, uh you know before you before your customers when something goes wrong um, and uh, uh, so that is very important. Uh, these are a few uh, books that I think uh, my, uh, I don't think any of these books are uh, new to uh, anyone in the, in the industry, but thought it would to refer. And uh, these are some articles I refer. Uh, and that's it, I think, from my side.